So Manfred, where are you going in this thing? With uh, Rubin. Yeah, with Rubin. Well, Rubin is Ruby, yes, in German. Uh, yeah, uh, Ruby. First to the Isle of Man. Yeah, what's going on there? ET race. ET races, wow, yes. that would be nice. And you have to paint all this first, do you? And you only have how, how much? A week left now? Yeah, so next, next, I have to water next Thursday. On Thursday? Well, that's not long, yeah? You've obviously done this before, you know how long things take. This takes a day. Yeah. It's a good day for it. It will dry nicely. the opposite boat. Well we're just doing some passage planning here. You can see this is well, I'll zoom out. This is Anglesey. This is Anglesey here. And this is a Menai Strait so goes between Anglesey and the mainland, Wales. <coughs> and we're over here in Port Penryn at Bangor and what I did was I put an automatic route from here the start to go all the way through to this point here and this is quite a, a dangerous piece of water just over here called the Swellies and so it's interesting to see how it calculated the route through there and you'll see if we zoom in um, it's taking us through the center here these are all the deep bits the white bits are the deep bits and where it has a little bit of trouble here you see it shows highlights that it's going over a shallow area this is swelling rock this is the danger point on it and so maybe we'd come a little bit too off to one side of that here while we're trying but it did a pretty good job I thought of um, of calculating a route through you can see all the rocks here and calculating a route through showing the danger spots all along here taking us through here This is Port de Norwick. It goes under the bridge. There's the bridge, Britannia Bridge. You can see it. It picks its, picks its way through the centre of the bridge here. It's pretty good, really. And so this takes us through Carnarvon, Port de Norwick first. And then there's Carnarvon here, Carnarvon here. And what I've done is I've put in just before the just before we enter the bar area, the estuary, if you like, um, there's a, an anchorage here. You can see the word anchorage there. And so we can anchor anywhere in here. 
um, spend the night over there. And what I've done is, well, I'll put the camera on me now, so you can have a little chat after. <clears throat> yeah, so, welcome to another session of Sarah of North Wales. And in this particular series of videos, we're going to find out what happens now, now that Sarah is all ready and ready to go in the water. We're going to find out where we go and what sort of an adventure we're going on. We've got a couple of months of nice sunny summer weather. And so all the hard work that we've done over the last year and a half, both came here a year and a half ago. And I haven't been working at hard on it, just off and on sorting, changing all the systems that I thought needed improvement, changing everything, making everything so that it all works in the way I would like it to work. And <clears throat> the main difference is that we're no longer running a diesel engine. We've still got the diesel engine in as a paperweight, if you like, but we're no longer running that engine because that engine is just too difficult to work on. It's, I can't get in there, I can't get in there to work on. It's just too difficult. So we've now got an electric boat. Um, so we've got an, an, an electric trolling motor, which should be able to push the boat around in calm conditions, leaving the dock and coming into the dock and that kind of thing. Coming to pick up a boy and so on. It should be really good for that. It's instantly on all the time. And you can, also run that off a generator so that's also nice that you don't need to rely on the batteries you can run it for as long as you've got petrol so it'll be good to experiment with that and see how far we get with that <clears throat> and then also in the winter or, or the early spring i managed to pick up a outboard motor yamaha outboard motor seven and a half horse which is now on the back, and this is a dual fuel motor. Its main fuel is kerosene, which is low cost fuel and very safe to have on board. And it doesn't go off like diesel, so you can have it store, store it for a long time. You don't have that diesel bug problem and it's not dangerous like petrol. So we have a certain amount of petrol on board. We run our petrol generator and the engine is two strokes, so you have to mix some oil in with with both the kerosene and the petrol. So you know, it took a little bit of getting used to that. Well, I've got that pretty well down to a T now, and it's not so difficult really. So I'll go and take you over to the back of the boat, and I'll show you the motors now. plenty of solar power, 200 watts of solar power up there and we've also got the canopy on now which is really nice, it keeps the uh, sun off and the rain off the instruments and so on. You'll see we've uh, We've done this ourselves. This is so that you can walk around here and this is open here. We have unclippable lines running through, clip, clippable lines running through there and so on.
see the helm position here. You've still got some switches to go in here. It's not finished there yet. And uh, the fuel tanks under there and the generator is under there as well. Just get your mind together and come on across to me. We'll hold hands and we'll watch the sun rise from the bottom of the sea. But first, are you experienced? You can see the sunken lounge idea over here how it's working now and that walks into the bedroom area there now you'll see the helm seat is uh, stashed over there and that doubles as a step to get through the front hatch We're standing on it now, gives us a good view out over the bay. We can see well by standing on it. Uh, here's the galley. There's a navigation station, also the dinner table as well. And you can see the helm seats in place now. It just fits on there. And generally we put that yellow squab on top of it. I'll do that now, like so. We're sitting in the helm position here and under the cover. And we're just able to see, we're sitting down, just able to see sheltered from the spray and the wind over the side. And down below. Yeah, you can see the I've put the the uh, iPad with Navionics on it in its place at the helm there. You can sit at the helm on the seat there, see the seat there, you can sit at the helm on the seat and swivel that around to any angle you want and so you can be sitting anywhere and or standing or driving and uh, have that access to the Navionics on the iPad. That rope on the steering wheel is just to tie it up to that bar at the top there if you want to lock the steering in place. It's really not for so much for steering by the wheel, generally you steer by the tiller, but it's so that you can lock the steering. You'll see the um, this, this, the tiller's locked and you can see we can move it. But if we tie that up, if we tie that rope up to there, I'll do that. <laughs> Tighten that a bit. <laughs> And you'll see it's locked in position now. It's locked. So that's our self steering really because you just get the boat pointed where you want it and lock it in place. That's how it works. Our main sheet traveller. used to be the engine down there, still down there, but not being used anymore. Much easier now. We can just go over here and stick on, on petrol on and
that easy. That's um, that's two stroke for you. Just starts first time, no choke, and just really, really reliable, easy. And you can take it off at the end of the season, take it home, make sure it's fully serviced. You don't have to break your back in some hole at the bottom of some boat, or it's not sitting all winter in some watery grave, getting all rusty. So uh, a far superior system, and also a motor which is the same era as this boat. I think the motor is about 1969, 1970, and the boat is 1970, 71, something like that. And so it's a similar era, so it goes quite nicely with the boat. And uh, well, it remains to be seen how we get on with it, but so far so good. And it's got a, a switch on there, it's stop gasoline and then um, onto kerosene so you start it on gasoline get it started on gasoline and then you can switch it onto kerosene once it's warmed up a bit and under here is there's two tanks um, kerosene on that side gasoline on that side small tank of gasoline big tank of kerosene and there's our generator and then um, when we're ready to go with that I won't start it. It starts easily. Okay. Okay. Well, somebody asked me for a quick run around a tour of the boats, and that's what you just had, basically. There's this section here, of course I haven't been through all that and the navigation equipment and so on. Yeah. Everything takes place. This is a sliding table. This table can go here or it can go over where you saw it in the other place. And it's very, very useful this. If you want to sit and have a cup of tea here, you can have, easily have a cup of tea here. And um, the bed is only a, a quick job to move this up one level and you've got, you can lie down if you're tired and want to really relax here and there's a place here, this is where the computer um, fits on here, sits on here so, yeah. and that's charging, that's running off the 12 volts I did try running it off an inverter for a while but it wasn't very successful and so the 12 volts system is better. Same as a car system. See if it's working. <laughs> Takes a little while. I run Linux. My own version of Linux is running on here. This is what I'll be doing my video editing on. I have a little mouse. A little optical mouse here which you can just use over here. Over here. Which this has got a very good trackpad on it. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad X230. Not very good trackpad, so I use a mouse for this one. Okay, so we've got everything that we've got on the iPad we've got on here. So we've got Navionics on here, you see. So if you want to yeah, 
If you want to, you can have two different views of where you are. One on the iPad and one on this at the same time, if you like. So it's got its advantages having both. Also, we've got a, a traditional chart plotter over here. But we don't have the maps for this area. They're too expensive. This is the AIS system. And you just simply turn that on here. And then um, you have to you have to connect what you want to watch it on you've got to connect it to this i won't do that but the ships just appear on the ocean there they are okay in this area here we have sort of glasses and suits and fishing gear fishing equipment and computer and uh, binoculars flashlight headlight and so on maps and stuff over here and so this is where we sleep over here this is uh, this is our main sleeping area if there's two of you the other one sleeps over there a uh, good warm sheepskin coat is absolutely essential in the boat forget about your plastic fantastic jackets that's an emergency bag or goes in the dinghy a dinghy bag and uh, okay and the other thing we haven't shown you is the toilet which I've never used because that's normally bucket and chuck it but this is the toilet area sails in here and so on yeah just where I keep my jackets and stuff We've got the time and we've got the barometer over here. Medical supplies over there, radio, depth. Solar charge controller. Inside here we have the device that runs the electric motor from the shore power which is connected through to the generator over there okay oh well i'm getting thirsty now it's time for a cup of coffee so i think um, that's enough for now and we go in the water on Monday, which is today is Saturday, Sunday, to, Sunday, Saturday today, Sunday tomorrow, and then we go in the water on Monday, and we'll be sailing out of here straight down the Menai Straits, and I'll show you straight down there. Thanks for watching.